All right, and now that this link is established, a unique point of view is being projected into the reality framework, representing what you would understand as walking the razor's edge between the concept of understanding what you know to be known and unknown. This is a point of view that is being simultaneously embraced on the part of the channel who is now, in this way, completely walking a razor's edge between these two points of view. It is this point of view that enables the channeling states to begin to unfold in a way where expectation nor certainty is programmed. So that way the idea of mystery can be the enveloping force that enables the channel to not have egoic interference. And the idea is the more this particular perception is embodied, the easier of a time the channel will have falling into the state deeper and deeper and deeper, almost as if he is falling asleep deeper and deeper and deeper into a dream. This is actually one of the reasons the channel does not remember a lot of his dreams, because of this notion of holding on so strongly to what is known, because he has been taught to value knowledge above all else. And the idea is that without mystery, knowledge does not exist because knowledge is gained through experience, which has elements of discovery associated with it. And in order to discover something, mystery must be a component. He has spent most of his life embracing what is known. And this is now a point of view enabling him to much more deeply embrace the notion of the unknown. At the same time, so that way, not only will the channeling state open up in new mysterious ways, but in addition to this, other aspects of his life will begin to open in such a way. This is an opening message for yourself. As you hear this technique, you will be able to embody it if you choose. But this is also for his consciousness to begin to soak in. So that way he can slip deeper and deeper and deeper understanding that through receiving this information, adding to his perception of knowledge, he can actually let go further into the unknown. For every time one thing is learned, the perception of the mystery of creation begins to then deepen. Now that we have allowed for some of the initial messages that I am sharing to come through, I will continue to work with you in whatever way, shape, or form you wish. Now that he is slipping deeper, I, as my own singular being, existing as a member of a collective, will be communicating through him primarily. And this link is now deepening. This link is now established. How may I be of service to you in whatever way you see fit? Well, thank you. And uh, welcome to this communication in this way. And I uh, would like to ask... Uh, about you, what what are you doing? Like, what do you like to do, or what are your? I like to do whatever it is I'm doing in the moment because I'm always changing. For I am always a unique being in every point of view, perception of time. So whatever I'm doing in the moment is what I like to do because I do not do things that on different levels I do not enjoy. And the idea is that even though I may do things that are challenging and have complexity in terms of the lesson learning dynamics. I still choose to embody whatever life hands me because I understand I am handing it as a gift to myself. So whatever it is that I do, I enjoy doing. Understanding that the ability to enjoy doing whatever I'm doing is something that I would call my birthright. I am allowed to do this and therefore I do this at all moments. And it allows for me to then be a highly intelligent being 
But if I were not enjoying what I were learning and resisting it, then I would not be able to effectively learn it. So whatever I am doing is what I enjoy to do. Okay, nice. And uh, uh, I was curious about some specifics, like uh, uh, I, I can imagine you are connecting to different be beings like Tyler for channeling yeah. or uh, meeting with uh, members of your society. Uh, what, what else there is that for you to do? Of course. Well, remember, whenever I'm interacting with other members of the Sasani people, we are always co-creating whatever it is we find most exciting in the moment. So this will always look like something different, but I do have particular themes relevant to my own passion that I end up exploring with many of these beings in terms of which you'd understand as a common denominator theme of my incarnated experience. So when I am interacting with other members of my family, my direct family, in terms of the Sasani people, you would understand the following idea. We oftentimes like to play games. I work with children in particular. We play different games with the children, assisting them in developing their own intuitive sense of self. So they are able to very quickly from a young age, because this is normal in our society, we assist the children in being able to develop what you would understand as extrasensory perceptions. The idea is these children are born knowing that they have these abilities and they oftentimes are utilizing them in very curious ways, in very unique ways. And we get to then observe them and learn how we can apply these same abilities creatively so we actually learn from our children. And the idea is the children when they are born have an understanding of what we as the adults in this world already have access to in terms of our own abilities. So they will actually hang around us so they can understand the frameworks, the infrastructure of these abilities they are born with. And just through being in our vibration, being in our presence, they actually teach themselves how to do it. And we are interacting with them on multiple levels. When we are with them in terms of our physical interactions with them, where we are in the same space, we get to interact with them in that level. But then we also are able to inhabit dual perspectives where we are able to show them from a higher point of view in terms of vibration, other aspects of their being. So they are able to essentially zoom out and understand exactly how the higher selves of our society are interacting with each individual member. And they are able to begin to understand this network. And this is just some of what we do, but you would understand my role as being a student and teacher of these new children that are being born into our societies. That's beautiful. Thank you. Of course. And uh, about your appearance, can you share something? How it, is, there, is there something that, that would make you... Uh, different from your, uh, from other members of your society that we, we would recognize you by. Yes, understand that all members of our society have uniqueness to them. Even though we have a homogeneous appearance where we all do appear slightly similar, understand you all appear slightly similar too. So we do have very similar characteristics in terms of our physical characteristics in that way. But in terms of myself, you would understand me as a male being. I am very slender. I am approximately 5'11", close to six foot. I am bald. I have blue eyes. In terms of markings on my body, I have various symbols that have been etched into my skin through our vibration technology that actually amplify some of these different abilities that I am helping the children to tap into. And the idea is these symbols that have been etched in to my skeleton in this way allow for the frequencies emanating from my life force to be channeled in a very specific automatic manner so it becomes natural to me, so I don't even have to think about it. The idea is my body is always emanating particular vibrations that allow for this point of view of a dual perspective of the higher self, as well as my more on the ground, so to say, version to be embodied. 
and some of these symbols are what you understand is what you've seen in the sacred circuitry idea. Understanding that there are different geometric shapes, circles, lines that are utilized, similar to what you'd understand as tattooing, but these are actually etched in to the skeleton. And I also have some on my skin as well. This is something that not all members of our society have. It is very unique to the particular line of work that I do. Wonderful, that's amazing. And uh, kind of conference, uh, I was curious about um, your members of your society wearing these symbols because I saw that. And uh, what, what kind of, what, what specific symbols do you have on yourself? Numbers or, I don't know. Yes, you would understand that I have the symbol representing expansion on my heart. Wow. Yes, heart center that is on the center point of my chest. That is permanently etched in to my skin. And when I say permanently, I mean it will remain there. The idea is through intention and through holographic interaction with my quasi-physicality, I can etch that and change that if I so choose, but I consider it to be permanent in the sense that if I were to just leave it alone, it would be how my skin presents. Our skin in this way is highly malleable because it is highly programmable because it has a variety of different crystalline silicon materials that are interwoven into our quasi-physical nature. And it is actually one of the elements that assists us in maintaining a quasi-physical existence. It is the silicon in that way that actually enables our skin to be able to support both physicality as well as states of non-physicality. And we are very quickly evolving from this. But this is the current status of our infrastructure in terms of our physical system. Oh, I see. I understand. And now you answered my question because I wanted to ask how will, uh, how will we turn more uh, into semi-physical, semi-physicality, and uh, it's probably through uh, consumption of silicon as well. It can help. Yes, understand that you have resources on your planet that have what you'd understand to be forms of silica. And the silica in this way, when it is in the proper form, will assist your skeleton in being able to hold extra dimensional energy in terms of what you understand as higher vibrational energies much more easily. Because the reason I have these etched into my skeleton is this is where the life force from the body emanates and it is also stored. It is like a database. So when you charge up your skeleton with certain minerals, It enables then for your skeleton to be able to hold certain energies that are in resonance with whatever mineral or element you are putting in. So yes, you absolutely can consume different forms of silica within your physical world, and this will have dramatic effects on your perception of yourselves and your reality. All right, thank you. Uh, we have uh, an, another uh, visitor here. All right. I want to offer her if, if she wants to ask a question. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, my first question is because I'm coming in cold, who are we speaking to? You are speaking to a child raising specialist of the Sasani civilization. I am disclosing a little bit about my uniqueness in terms of myself as a being. And I am also sharing tools that can be utilized for your species to be able to maximize the storage capacity and emanation capacity of the skeletal system, because this is one of the largest crystalline databases you have access to. You would understand my name to be the following. Ryok, R-Y-O-K, if you had to spell it, Ryok. And male or female or male? Male. male in terms of how my physicality expresses itself. Okay, thank you. Um, the first question I'm, I find myself wondering is if you know me as a member of your own society? I do know you, but I want to ask you, how do you understand the concept of knowing someone? Um, in this sense, I'm meaning it as myself being a being in your world that oh. you have interacted with? 
In other words, do you have another incarnation on Esasani and within our society, and we are familiar with this version of you, or do you mean are we familiar with you as you experience yourself as a human being? The first one. All right. Yes, you do have multiple parallel incarnations in the Sasani civilization throughout our history. You have two incarnations that are related to when we were first being created and when we were first created in alignment with the idea of our home world, because our home world is also hybridized to support our own hybrid DNA in this way. You have a variety of different incarnations throughout our history. Yes, and in our future. You oftentimes will choose to incarnate here, and I'm speaking to your soul in this way, and you also have oversoul connections to our world. But yes, you will oftentimes choose this as a theme, and it's one of the reasons you gravitate to these points of view. You have multiple incarnations here. Is there one that stands out to you, and can you tell me about it? Yes, it's essentially one of our future incarnations. So I'm speaking to you as if you are that being, so her energy can be downloaded by you in this conversation so you can start to open that door a little bit more. But this is a future incarnation where our society has begun to evolve to the fullest extent of our quasi-physicality before we finally take the leap into non-physicality. You exist in this point of view. You are on the leading edge of consciousness transformation in our world. You are also assisting people in being able to learn how to essentially, this is going to sound a little funny, but swallow their physical bodies, swallow their quasi-physical bodies. So the information from the physical incarnations we have had and quasi-physical incarnations we have had can then be downloaded much more effectively into our energy vehicles, which are emanating from our own life force that we then use to transport ourselves into a non-physical existence. So the idea is you would understand it as going completely within in that way, where you go so far within yourself that you bring your physicality with you and therefore transform it into non-physicality. You are teaching members of the society how to do this. And is that incarnation associated with the work I'm here doing now with the crystals? Yes, it is. Can you tell me this one's name? She has evolved past the need for name. Because we are such a level of unity consciousness, we are not utilizing names, but I am going to contact her one moment. Thank you. All right. She has multiple potentialities because, again, this is a future existence and she's expanded her point of view to such an extent where she is aware of all of her parallel versions. They all are going by slightly different variations of vibrational emanations in relationship to names that are unique to their parallel reality experiences. So I am honing in on the version of her that's most relevant to you. One moment. All right. You would understand... Remember, this will oftentimes change depending on how you change, but the one that will yield the most consistency is going to be the following name. E I. E, one moment, one moment. E O Kona. 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 E O Kona, yes. Yes, as you say, her emanation is broadcasting stronger to you. Yes, I can feel it. Um, has she transmitted to me through the crystal? Yes. I'm wondering which one she is now of the many faces, the many beings who have come through. Not many females do come through. So hmm. can, can you describe her for me uh, physically, energetically? Understand it's not a matter of physically at this point. Yes. Uh, Energetically, you would understand her to be essentially made of light in this way. The light is emanating various colors that reflect different aspects of what once was her physicality. The idea is she would look apparently like a rainbow bubble in this way, where she at her center point would be emanating a field of golden light. You would understand this to be slightly humanoid as the center of this bubble. So you, you could imagine a figure within a bubble. The idea is within the bubble, she is glowing. 
there are in terms of the aspects of her physicality that are being processed into this energy body. She has certain symbols that are on various regions of this center body within the bubble. You would understand a triangle would be present at the third eye, encapsulating some of her forehead. She also has different symbols throughout other aspects of her body. In terms of the bubble that she is encased in, there are different layers to this bubble. The innermost layer is red, followed by gold, followed by, one moment, there is indigo, violet on the most outer regions of the bubble, white separating the gold and the indigo. And the idea is the interplay of these colors, because this field is moving, it's not static. These colors are constantly shifting, depending, of course, upon her energy, because this bubble is her energy. It's essentially her consciousness just project. Do not exist in terms of perception in your own physical framework. Okay, so when she has transmitted to me through the crystal, she is not transmitting to me a visual, um, uh, I'm going to say physicality to see. No, it is not physicality. It, it's it more not. in terms it of is. just color. It is in this projected form of her that we are describing. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for that. Many of the beings who come through are giving me a visual appearance uh, and posing for what I call portraits, which are headshots, which I can share with the world. <laughs> um, I'm having a lot of fun with this. I'm wanting to advance it. Um, I'm wanting to open up my vocal channel All right. to help um, some of these beings uh, connect and transmit through me vocally and that just is happening in ultra slow motion compared to what I can do visually and as a visual channel bringing through the visuals. Um, is there anything you or she would share with me about what I could do to um, will advance this more rapidly as far as uh, opening the vocal channel? Mm -hmm. Yes, there are a variety of different tools you can use, but the first tools we are going to advise are tools of perception, how you view yourself. Again, this is a lesson for all of you who are listening because you are all growing in this respect. You are all exploring similar themes and improving your skills as channels, understanding you are always channeling. Yes. Right now you are vocally channeling. <laughs> but understand, channeling can also be expressed in terms of illustration, in terms of music production, in terms of all different forms of expression that aren't limited to vocally channeling. So the idea is you can expand this point of view of channeling to not just be limited to your voice, but to also expand into when you are simply moving, when you are simply breathing. Understand you are always channeling in aspects of your own energy at all times. Also understanding that you are always channeling yourself. So no matter what you're channeling, even if you consider it to be another consciousness, that is still you. When you trace the lineage of consciousness all the way back to the source point, you will see it is all you. So the idea here is to allow for your consciousness to begin to understand you are always channeling yourself. As soon as you start to look at what you're channeling as externalized, you block the information. You absolutely block the information. You cannot look at it that way and be an effective channel. And the reason for this is you are creating separation that doesn't really exist. It is only an illusion of the experience of existence. Because even in the spirit realm, the idea of separation is still an illusion that is still honored as just a point of view for when beings choose to interact with one another so they can play the game of difference. But as you get closer and closer to source, you start to realize there is no difference. Yes. Yes. Now I'm meaning something very in particular when I'm saying the word channeling. Um, for instance, right now I'm speaking from my KC consciousness. Yes. But 
I'm meaning to connect with um, other aspects of my total consciousness and allowing them to do the speaking through yeah. me. And this yeah. is the part that is coming. It's you doing the speaking through you. Don't, yeah. look, at it, don't look at it as they. Uh, okay. Don't look at it as they. It will block you. I'm Understand just, right now in this moment, we're just going to elaborate what's going on inside the channel you're talking to. As we shared this point of view, his ability to channel increased tenfold. There was slight blockages within the channeling stream prior to this because he adopted the point of view of externalized beings. And that was actually what was blocking him from channeling my consciousness. Does this make sense? Yes. So just through you asking this question and us giving you the information, he has now become an effective channel of myself. Mm -hmm. And this is the key for all of you. Realize you are always channeling yourself, even if it appears to be an externalized being. And the idea is when you are channeling these beings, it's not that you are letting their consciousness take you over, right? That's how many people view channeling. Oh, it's them speaking through me. No, it's not. It's you speaking through you, but you have raised your vibration to be in resonance with their consciousness. So it is still you speaking through you. Always. Yes. It's never not you speaking through you. Yes. And here's the part that's confusing to me. Right. Um, because as of 2009, I'm somebody who has been able to um, shift from my current framework into other frameworks, into okay. other aspects of my total consciousness. Um, but for some reason, uh, when I'm located here in the 3D Earth life, for lack of a better way to say it, yes, um, yes. I'm... I can make that connection uh, to, a, a, to, to a degree with them, but mm, there seems to be a barrier to letting it through to a greater degree. Yes. Can you see what that barrier is in me? I can, but I won't tell it to you yet. <laughs> I can't tell it to you yet. Understand that if I were to tell it to you, it would violate your own synchronistic progression of your journey. Okay. Remember, what this conversation is, is just one drop in the bucket of you learning how to be a vocal channel. There are other teachers, there are other lessons, there are other synchronicities you must go through as you grow this skill. So I can't spoil it all right now because that would be robbing you of experience that won't just facilitate your ability to channel, it would rob you of experiences that are going to emanate into other areas of your life. So you must go through these things. But I will play with you right now because now that I have given you the answer that I can't tell you, I'm going to present you a point of view for you to tell yourself. Are you okay. ready? Yes. All right, let's get started. What are you scared of when you are in social situations and you are telling people about what you do? I'm, I'm afraid of hurting them. Um, I'm afraid of giving them too much too soon. Um, okay. I'm afraid of, at a very deep level, uh, from experience and in other incarnations, what they might do to me. <laughs> all right. Very relevant to all who are vocal channels. This is a very common theme for people who are not just vocal channels, but people who practice anything that looks a little too magical for your mainstream society. This is a common other incarnational theme. One of the things I would like for you to consider doing is the following. Speak to those other incarnations. Speak to them. Look at yourself in front of a mirror. Look at yourself in front of a mirror, creating states of love and joy within your innermost self. And when you speak to the mirror, talk to them. Okay. Give them whatever messages you want to give them. Okay. This is multi-layered. I'm giving this to you for a very specific reason. It will not just help you with these other entanglements with your past selves. It is going to expand your multidimensional perception. So it's very important you consider utilizing this particular exercise. Yes, and you probably are already aware I'm very visual. So if I use the mirror and even if I don't, I'm going to see them. <laughs> yes, you will. You may find yourself creating pictures of them. Yes. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Um, 
that's all I can think of at the moment. That was more than what I thought I was going to ask. Thank you so much. The gates are open in this way. Now that this point of view has been established in the channel's belief system constructs, his ability to allow for this energy to emanate through him is going to become highly crystallized. So all of you will be able to get much more than you may have anticipated. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Always welcome. Thank you. As are you in our hearts. Thank you so much. Uh, may I continue? <laughs> yes, you may. It is our pleasure to be able to continue to go down the rabbit hole together. Let us continue this exciting journey. We thank you for, again, your ambition, your passion in the creation of this forum where we can express ourselves freely in this manner. And you can all express yourselves even more freely by expanding your point of view to include us. Wonderful. Yeah, the, 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 you you answering my questions before I ask them, but I will ask anyway. Uh, um, but uh, what you said, uh, I I want to take even a little bit further. And uh, uh, does that mean that I am speaking to myself now through? Yes. 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 So um, if. Uh, if that's true, <laughs> um, may may I uh, simply switch from uh, channeling Gira channel to channeling you to channel Bashar and, and other members of your society? Uh, is it, may that be like my decision then? It is, understand, a co-created decision between the aspects of the shared consciousness between you and these other expressions of yourself. So in other words, from the very highest levels of the shared connection points that you have to these other beings, that is where the agreement is made. So that way, the emanations of that shared point, which expresses itself as these individuated incarnations, such as yourself in this human form, Bashar, as you understand that name, in his form, understand that from that connective point, that is where the agreement must be made. You don't always make that agreement with all beings, just as you don't agree to meet every being that exists in your physical life. Although it is possible in a certain sense, it is not something that has a lot of relevance to your own physical journey. So understand what you connect with, what you channel will be highly relevant to your physical journey as well as all of those who then work with you while you are channeling. And that is actually how the synchronicity of channeling works. It is a soul contract between yourself and whatever being you are connecting with. So the two of you can then work together to serve in a synchronistic manner whomever it is that's engaging with the two of you expressing your consciousness as one singular consciousness. I see. Uh, um, so every being you will channel, you are already contracted to channel. You just don't know it yet until, again, that connection is made. But yes, you have multiple beings that you can channel. You are never just limited to one, although when you just channel one, you begin to explore that connection in its fullest. And that's actually why it is oftentimes advised that many people practice and practice and practice with the same consciousness, the same being, because it drives the skill in. It crystallizes it. That perfect sense. Yes, please. What are you saying? That makes perfect sense. I didn't, didn't want to interrupt you. Just continue. Yes, yes. Understand. It then crystallizes the skill. So that way, when you go to channel another consciousness, you already know what it is to dive that deep into that particular type of relationship. Because the relationship of channeling a being is a very unique and specific kind of interaction. And as you master that with one being, you can then copy and paste that type of thing because of the level of freedom he has allowed for myself to interact with him. He has a hang up on judging the previous information he has spoken. The idea is what is holding him back the most is the following notion. Judging that which which you view as inauthentic channeling. Understand it is always authentic channeling. You are always, again, channeling yourself. You might be channeling a version of yourself that is not in resonance with a particular other being, another entity, but you are always channeling yourself. 
So when you judge the information you have previously channeled, you are actually judging yourself. So if you project negative ideas onto your previous channels, you are actually judging yourself across different points in time. And it will end up holding you back until you pick up the pieces and integrate those aspects of yourself. So if you release a channeling video and you then say, oh, I don't like what I said at this moment, so he can create a point of view that is all encompassing for all aspects of what has come through him while he is in the channeling state. And this is one message we have for him. And for any of you, if you find this useful, please feel free to integrate it, utilize it in whatever way, shape or form you all want. Yeah, I find it very useful. And go a little deeper if you wish. Understand, though, if you wish to disengage from the channeling session, that is all right. He is eager to continue this because this is the deepest he's actually gone. So this is a Wonderful. state that he's now learning to play with. Yes, we will now begin to share more information in relationship to our current understanding of what your earth is experiencing on a collective level. So you can begin to navigate some of the changes that your earth is going through and how you can be active participants in the changes your earth is going through. Because remember, you're creating the changes your earth is going through. This is something we want you to understand that it is your connection to the earth that will be the pillar in your own understanding of your evolutionary process. For as you connect with the earth, you are essentially voting in your collective consciousness of whatever reality experience it is you desire to experience in terms of the parallel versions of earth you can shift to. So if you are not allowing for a strong embodied connection with your earth to exist, the amount of say that you have in terms of the reality you shift to in terms of the earth perception, the earth experience becomes slightly a little more limited. But as you then allow for yourself to physically connect with the earth and then spiritually connect with the earth, you can then send your intentions, you can send your vibrations, your emanations into the center of your earth, which then represents, again, the center point representing the zero point. It is the zero point where all possibilities are accessible. So as you plug in your intentions, your emanations, your energies into this zero point of the Earth consciousness, you are essentially driving the spaceship of Earth into a particular parallel reality experience that's in resonance with your intentions, with your desires. We want you to have this because many of you understand, oh, I'm going through a great shift and I don't know what to do about it other than work on myself. And that is amazing. We are not laughing at you, but we are saying that is just one tool in the box. Understanding you are creating the change is what allows for you to then shift more effectively into the parallel reality experience version of Earth you say you desire. So by connecting with the Earth, by sharing your dreams with with the earth. Creating this linkage point between you and the center of the earth allows for you to better shift the reality experience, better shift your perception of these changes in a manner that is most reflective of your passion and your joy. And this is a key to being able to do this. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you for this. You are quite welcome. Thank you for hearing the message that we have decided to share. We will, at this point, allow for the transmission to come to an end, unless there is anything else. About my bones, I went through severe inflammation inside bones, yeah. and I feel that's still not sensitive, and it's still kind of like pulling me in all my face there, you know, to that place. So I see it, this is probably some some sort of vortex or, or even black hole that is <laughs> pulling it there. Can you say something about it? You feel a vortex pulling you where? I had operation in, in uh, my mm, jar in my uh, lower bone mm -hmm. and I they removed a uh, few of my teeth and, and uh, uh, insides of that bone. Yes. And, uh, it's still healing and I perceive that it's 
connected to my reality as, as some kind of uh, uh, signaling <laughs> uh, place, you know. And uh, and what what does that mean like when I when I feel the pull inside, you know? And, and it's quite strong sometimes. Where do you feel it pulling you? Do you feel it pulling you to the direction of where the teeth have been removed? It's pulling me. Um, what uh, I uh, I thought that there was, or, or even the doctor thought that there was still a little piece of dead bone uh, in in under my skin or near my gums. Yes. Um, I don't think it's there, but this, that place uh, is kind of not uh, not sensitive from the moment I uh, I got injection there to to cut the sensitivities because they were they were removing my teeth. <laughs> yeah. All right, I will speak on this a little bit. Understand that your matrices of energetic fields related to the aura of the teeth are still present within the mouth. Understand, just as we've said, the skeleton is a database. You store information in the teeth. Mm. You store information in your teeth that is oftentimes relevant to the activation of certain abilities within your body. That's why many people enjoy clicking their teeth together. The idea is it is connected to all of your major organs in this way. And the teeth in particular represent the notion of different abilities that you have. You can actually begin to connect different abilities, different skills, with these teeth so you can begin to understand that, oh, I want to engage this skill. This involves this many teeth or the canine over here. And you can actually link the skill to the teeth and utilize the bones in this way as a way to hone in on whatever ability you wish. This will be very subtle, but you'll find you can practice it. So when those teeth were removed, you essentially had the physical storage unit of certain abilities, certain skills taken out. However, the information is still there present within the auric field of the removed teeth, asking for you to begin to download it so it can be stored in other locations. So the idea would be to actually meditate upon this area, and that is one of the reasons it is actually calling for your attention. Your nervous system is guiding you there so you can then be able to extract the messages that are stored within where the bone used to be, and then you can restore it in a different area. I see. I see. That makes sense. So there's something that, that uh, is unexplained for me, and that's actually uh, my uh, eight, eight teeth, uh, all of them. They were... Uh, causing my other teeth to to you know disintegrate and they are, they were not uh, straight up but uh, pushing to other teeth from the side and now uh, one, one is still inside my skull and uh, it's it's hidden but it's it's seen on a 3d uh, scan uh, what what that, what is it for <laughs> that one right there all right, one second. I am. You want to know the skills it's associated with? Yes. Uh, and well, it, from from the point of view of a human, it seems really inappropriate for it to be there. What could be this? You know, it's it's simply causing me only only trouble. I would say, you know. But uh, one, moment. one moment, we are scanning into it. You have an aspect of your energy that's not expressing itself fully, so you have an underdeveloped skill and the underlying motivational energy of this skill is actually causing the tooth to inappropriately be growing in directions that are actually not supportive of the effects of your other teeth. So the idea would be that you have an underlying energetic dynamic within yourself that is not expressing itself in a way that allows for you to be living your passion fully and understand that that's actually manifesting in the tooth coming out crooked because this energy is also impeding into other areas of your own life. Mm. Okay, can you go deeper into that? So All right, well, let me ask you this. What passion have you been wanting to explore that you were not exploring? <laughs> have you had a passion theme that has arisen that you have said, oh, I'll get to that later? Or have created reasons to not act on it? 
I, I would say not really. I act on it on in a certain way, but uh, let's say I I like I have certain fetishes that I I don't want to uh, like engage in like fully uh, <laughs> look yes. really strange to other members of our society. <laughs> All right, well, would you like to explore that? Because we have a hunch that this is related to it. Yeah, if, uh, we, we can explore it, but let's say um, I'm comfortable with, with uh, the situation, how it is, comfortable enough to you know, be, be happy and, and, uh, and fully enjoying what, whatever versions uh, of, of that fetish of mine I, I can you know but I saw this future before I don't I'm not seeing it now you know but uh, I thought that there there might be instances where I uh, kind of physically enjoy uh, doing what I what I use uh, only uh, recordings of <laughs> yes we understand that's why we're allowing you to express yourself the idea of these expressions of energy is a highly volatile topic for your society, but not because it's intrinsically volatile, but because it's just never explored, so it builds up. So we understand that it is a little uncomfortable in the sense of talking about these things and discussing them, but we are actually coming in to help all of you embrace these aspects of you. Remember, these are aspects of you. And we're not telling you you need to do one thing or do another thing or be this kind of person or be that kind of person. What we're saying is whenever you have passion, whenever you have excitement, that extends into all areas of your experience as a human being. Remember, excitement does not leave anything out. So that means every aspect of your experience can be experienced from a point of view of just being comfortable and settling or a point of view of being exciting. And the idea is your excitement will cause you to explore whatever these energies are in whatever way, shape, or form you are called to do so, and then it may change. And the idea is sometimes it's just the exploration of certain things that then enable you to understand that point of view better and then integrate more of yourself. Yes, I think I, I feel that I, I don't I don't really get it deeply enough to to say you know like intellectually, <laughs> but uh, uh, I I feel that that it's it, you have helped me uh, probably with with connecting uh, my teeth and and um, my fetish that uh, you have helped me. Uh, I'm on the right path to, to you know, un let this unfold in a way that may it may. And uh, thank you. Of course. It is our pleasure. Remember, we will always reflect back to you, not only your highest excitement, but that which also holds you back. We work double duty in that way because that which holds you back is simply your own energy impeding upon the expression of your highest joy, highest passion, and its action within your life. So we were always happy to help you dive in to whatever it is you feel is holding you back. We are saying this for all of you so you can understand a theme that is explored within our society. Yes, thank you. You are welcome. It has been our passion, pleasure, and joy to be able to interact with each of you in this manner. We thank you for, again, creating this shared space where these types of energies can continue to deepen into their perception on behalf of your own ego personalities. And understand, the more you integrate these points of view that you are all emanating, the more you become more of yourselves because we are simply reflecting back more of who you are. Thank you so much for this communication. Thank you. You are welcome. Thank you. So fun.